I got this Toro Recycler with personal pace and electric start from a family that got tired of fighting with it. They'd run it and shut it off to empty the bag and when they go back to start it, it wouldn't start again. So if you're interested in seeing how I fix that, I'll put a link at the end of this video. Today I'm going to get this ready for the summer mowing season. We're going to change the oil, check the air filter, check and sharpen the blade, and I'll show you how I do it. Let's get started. Now actually, getting ready for a new mowing season starts when you stored it last fall. What you want to do is drain the gas out of the fuel tank and then start the lawnmower and run it until all the gas is out of the carburetor. If you do that, then other than the few items we're going to take care of today, all you need to do is fuel it up with fresh gas and you're ready to go. Now I know the oil is dirty and needs to be changed, but the first thing I want to do is check the oil. And we're still good. We're between the two dots, actually closer to the top one. So we can go ahead and start it up, run it for about 30 to 60 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and change the oil. The reason I like to warm it up a little bit, gets the oil warm, gets the contaminants moving around, the oil will drain freely, and we'll get everything out that we can. To properly tip over a mower, what you want to do is pull the cord till you feel resistance. Right there. That puts the piston at top dead center. That will keep the oil from leaking into the cylinder and locking up the cylinder. You also want to tip the mower to the muffler side, which is this way. The air filter's on this side, the muffler's on the other side. Now we can go ahead and tip it and get ready to change the oil. That'll also keep you from dumping oil onto your driveway or wherever you're working. Now the drain plug for this mower is right here, right under this guard. So the first thing we need to do is just move this out of the way so we can get at the drain plug. That's a half inch bolt on that. Of course you turn it counterclockwise and we can get that bolt out. Now this bolt also holds the engine to the frame, so when you put this back in, you want to make sure to get it nice and tight. You're not just holding this guard here. Now a lot of the newer motors don't have a drain plug in the bottom anymore. That's not good. Now this is where the drain plug would be on this mower right here. And I can see they just got a blank stub in there, so I can't remove that. So I'm going to have to tip the mower over to drain the oil. I don't like it. I don't like the way they do that now, but that's the way it is. If you're fortunate enough to have a drain plug there, typically it'll just be the end of a 3 8 drive. Just stick that in, loosen this guard. You can move it over to the side a little bit, stick that in, and take the plug out. But this just has a blank plug in there. There's no way to get that out. Now since I've got this tipped upside down, I'm going to go ahead and remove the blade and we can sharpen it. Now this particular mower has a 5 8 bolt on here and I'm going to take a rag and hold that against here so I don't cut myself. And you lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now there's a bolt and a washer and then this guard on here that holds it in place. So you just want to remember how that goes on. Like so. And 
The wings always go up on the back of the blade. The wings always face up. So this goes this way. You don't want to put it on that way and actually this blade is beveled and that's the only way you can put this on. Okay, I just come over to my bench vise here and we'll put it in the bench vise. And this blade is actually in very good condition so it doesn't need much but you want to just follow the angle of the blade that's already there. You can use a hand file like I've got here. And then I like to hit the back side just to finish it off, take any burrs off. Very nice. I will do the other side. You want to be sure to wear safety glasses and gloves are a real good idea too. And you can see there's rust on here so I can that helps me see what angle to put the blit, the grinder at. Just take the burr off at the end. Now while you're sharpening your blades, you want to check and make sure that they're balanced, that one side's not heavier than the other. I've got this little cheap plastic balancer, probably just a couple bucks, and it works fine. But you just go ahead and throw the blade on there. And you can see this side's too heavy, so I need to take more off even though I've got the blade sharpened I need to take more off this side and if you run it unbalanced like that it causes a hardship on the engine and it won't sound like it's running smooth because this side's too heavy so we'll go ahead and take a little bit more off this side Looks good enough in my book. Let's go throw it back on the mower and get that oil changed. And we can't do this one wrong because of the way it's beveled, but make sure the wings are up. Wings up, wings up. Good. And while you're under here, you actually should do this in the fall, but make sure that Clean out the grass, any dead grass sitting underneath here because that rots your deck out. And now we can go ahead and tip the mower back up. And you'll notice no oil leaks. That's because we properly prepared and tipped the mower. Now to change the oil, just going to pull the bag off real quick and you know how to do that. Just lift, pulls right out. I'm going to run it for just another minute to warm the oil up just a little bit because we took time to sharpen the blade. And it seemed to be running smoother now that I got the blade balanced. Now we're going to follow the same process for tipping it over again. I'm going to pull this, get that piston to top dead center. There it is, right there. I really don't like that small engines have gone to doing this. And we'll tip it over. And if you have an extractor that pumps oil out of the crankcase, it's a lot easier than this. And 
and now we can put the oil back in. I got fresh oil here, and this engine takes half a quart, 16 ounces. So I poured half a quart of 10W30. They, they call for SAE 30, straight 30 with detergent. You don't want to get 30 weight without detergent. 30 weight with detergent, or you can go 10W30. I went with 10W30 here. I recommend you follow the manufacturer's recommendation. Now one thing you don't want to do is ever overfill a crankcase. It's real hard on the engine, on the seals. That's the worst thing you can do. The second worst thing you can do is underfill it. So you want to make sure you're between those two dots and preferably right up underneath that top dot. That's where you need to be, right underneath there. And we are right below that dot there. Perfect. And that's how easy it is to change your oil. Now let's check the air filter. Now the air filter is right underneath this cover here. Open that up. Pops right out and that is a dirty air filter. Now if your air filter is not that dirty, you can just knock it out like this. Or if you have compressed air, blow it out. This is shot. Now you can go to your big box store and pick up an air filter. You want to either take it with you or measure it. These for the Briggs & Stratton engine are four and a half inches by five inches. I also checked the price at the big box store and one filter was $11.98. Ouch! So I delayed this a little bit and I ordered five off of eBay for $8.29 with free shipping plus tax. And these are basically the exact same thing. Same size. And it's not rocket science. You're just trying to keep debris out of the carburetor. Now that one was so dirty, I want to wipe this one out just a little bit. This just fits in like that. These tabs go in these holes here. Slide that in. Put our screw back in. Good. Now one last thing you can do is check your spark plug. If it's running well, you probably don't need to change it. I find that people change spark plugs a lot more than they need to, but it doesn't hurt. But I like to take a look at it, see how it's burning. And this one's burning fine. You don't want it real black, and you don't want it white. The way this one is here, it's burning beautiful, clean. So I don't even need to clean this or change it out. Throw that back in. You want to be careful not to cross-thread it. Do it by hand until it's almost in all the way. And then you just snug it down. Good. And now we'll just throw the bag back on. We're ready to fire it up. Now when you tip your mower over like that, it may take a few more pulls to get it started because it floods the carburetor. And you'll be 
is set for the summer. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.